Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 135 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case describing potential complications when tried to wire through highly stenotic and tortuous coronary lesions. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with unstable angina. She was found to have two-vessel coronary artery disease with uh, significant lesions in a calcified left anterior descending artery and also with a significant lesion into the circumflex at the bifurcation of a large obtuse marginal branch. There was also a CTO of a relatively small right coronary artery. After discussion with the patient, as well as the referring physicians, she was not deemed to be a good candidate for coronary bypass, and PCI was the plan. We decided to treat the circumflex and the LAD lesions, starting with the circumflex. So we wired both branches and decided to treat this bifurcation with a provisional approach. We predilated and placed the stand into that larger superior branch in the obtuse marginal. There was some pinching of the distal circumflex. That is why the distal circumflex was rewired. Kissing balloon inflation was performed, as well as the proximal optimization technique. And that provided a very nice result in the circumflex. At this point, we had used a relatively small amount of contrast and radiation, and we decided to treat the LAD. We did, however, have a lot of difficulty advancing a guide wire through the mid LAD lesion. We did try with the Xeon Blue as well as a Samurai wire, but we had a lot of difficulty and eventually changed for a polymer jacketed, non tapered, soft wire, which was the Xeon Black. But unfortunately, as we can see here, the Xeon Black is going into a diagonal branch, but seems to be slightly outside the vessel. And actually, at this point, in a different projection, it's clear that the wire is actually no longer within the lumen, so it has likely entered into the subintimal space. What is the next step? And the problem now is that actually we do have compromise of flow to the distal LAD, and the patient is having some chest discomfort. So this is an example of acute vessel closure, likely due to dissection from the wire advancement attempts. What to do in those cases? The first step is to maintain wire position, but unfortunately in this case we never were able to wire the vessel in the first place. The second is to determine and treat the cause, and there are many causes of acute vessel closure, but in this case it is fairly obvious that the wire went in the subintimal space and a dissection is the reason for the acute vessel closure. And finally, consider the need for hemodynamic support if the patient becomes unstable. But fortunately, our patient remained hemodynamically stable, even though there was decreased flow into the LAD. Specifically, when the reason for acute vessel closure is dissection, the treatment depends on whether we have a wire in the vessel or not. If we do, then placing a stand is the answer. If we don't, as in our case, the question is, can we advance a guide wire through that area of dissection and confirm distal to lumen position. If that's the case, then we we'll place a stand. If not, then emergency bypass may be needed, or if the vessel closed is a relatively small one, then maybe medical therapy could be used as well. In this case, the lady was a large vessel, and we decided that we had to obtain access. We were unable to advance a workhorse guide wire, and eventually decided to use um, uh, undergrade dissection reentry, use the stingray balloon, to re-enter into the distal true lumen. So here is the stingray balloon advanced distal to the area of dissection and performing the double blind stick and swap technique. Initially, the wire goes um, between the two mark, proximal to the proximal marker, and then uh, it's pulled back and redirected, and now the wire goes between the two markers. Unfortunately, the flow was stopped distally, so we could not really confirm whether we were in the distal true lumen or not although there seems to be still persistent dissection in this area. We decided to perform balloon angioplasty, and that uh, now restored TM3 flow to the distal LAD. The question now is whether we should place stents, because we know we have um, an extensive area of dissection in the mid-LAD, or should we let the patient um, recover and uh, let the dissection planes heal and bring the patient back later on? There are pros and cons for both scenarios. The downside of leaving this dissection is that there is a truly a large filling defect and there is a significant risk for 
having acute vessel closure lately, which uh, could have been a significant event because of the large size of the LAD. The downside of placing stents is that side branches, at least some of them, could be occluded. We decided to proceed with stents, so we placed the stent in the middle LAD and then overlapped more proximally with another stent. And that did restore T3 flow to the distal LAD. However, as we had predicted, unfortunately, several of the branches were gone, including a large septal branch and a diagonal branch. Um, the patient had improvement in symptoms, but still had some ongoing chest discomfort. We can still see here that uh, this septal branch is no longer present after stents are placed. And also, there was um, uh, a diagonal branch that was on the lateral side of the LAD that is also occluded. So the patient. Um, uh, was treated uh, medically at this point. She did have chest discomfort that subsequently resolved. She did have an increase in the cardiac biomarkers. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that when advancing a wire through a tortuous and calcified vessel, there is a possibility of causing dissection of a, or acute vessel closure, as happened in this case. The polymer jacketed wires may be more likely to cause a dissection so potentially having persisted with the workhorse wires might have decreased the risk of dissection. Once there is acute vessel closure, then it is critical to get the wire distal into the distal true lumen. If uh, a workhorse wire can be advanced distally, this is great, but unfortunately in this case it was not possible. In this case, we used a CTO technique using the Stingray balloon to enter into the distal true lumen and then place stents. But uh, unfortunately, there was a large area of dissection. When we placed stents, there was loss of side branches with uh, chest discomfort and increase in cardiac biomarkers. So acute vessel closure, important to prevent it, being very gentle with cut wire manipulations. If it occurs, then using CTO techniques does provide an avenue for restoring flow into the vessel. Another option would have been emergency coronary bypass graft surgery. However, that probably would not have been a great idea especially in an elderly patient like this one. Thank you very much.